10,000 years before the fall of Hyrule, the land was home to a race closer to gods than men, the Sheikah, a people so advanced that even the most powerful monsters proved no threat. Possessing not only unrivaled martial prowess, military might, and craftsmanship, but a clairvoyance which allowed their monks to read the future, as clearly as you or I might read a book. Despite the presence of Ashika, Hyrule wasn't without strife. Its history eternally tethered to a single dark power, a feral monstrosity known only as the Calamity Ganon. Its origins unknown, forgotten, or perhaps even redacted from history, Ganon existed as a primal evil, which inevitably surfaced time and time again throughout the ages. The resurgence of Ganon predating the Great Calamity happened 10,000 years earlier, as always, emerging without warning, like lightning from a clear blue sky. However, with the Sheikah's divine foresight, Ganon did not surprise them. The Shadow Folk were ready, with four titanic divine beasts, walking fortresses piloted by champions, a legion of tank-like guardians, and of course, individuals with the spirit of the hero and blood of the goddess, ready to seal the evil at its source. Ganon stood no chance against this ready defense, a trap lying in wait for his appearance, from which the beast could not escape. His defeat here held for 10,000 years, an era of peace in which hundreds of generations came and went, the threat of Ganon fading from history into little more than a fairy tale. However, the godlike power of the Sheikah's creations terrified the King of Hyrule, and in his paranoia, he forbade its use. Colossal machines were buried deep beneath the ground and forgotten, and the Sheikah, for the most part, returned to a rural way of life. But as we know, the might of the Sheikah wasn't gone from the world, just dormant, beneath the ground, lying in wait. For when the Calamity returned, the Divine Beasts and Guardians, together with a princess and a hero, were again ready to face its fury. However, this battle quickly turned, when Ganon poisoned the machinery, seizing the sacred automata for himself, and using the engines to lay waste to the world. His victory here was so absolute that Hyrule was destroyed almost in its entirety. The kingdom burned to ash, its king dead, and even its hero, Link, mortally wounded. But this was not the end. After a century in the Shrine of Resurrection, Link awoke, reborn, traveling the wilderness and bringing Hyrule back from the brink of defeat. With unwavering courage, Link fought back the blights which infected the Divine Beasts, and together with the princess, vanquished the Calamity. But this raises an important question. If the Divine Beasts and Guardians, engines designed by a race with the ability to see the future, were designed to seal Ganon, why did they fail? Why were the shrines, trials only needed in a world in which Ganon has won, constructed? Unless... Did the Sheikah know Ganon would take control of their machines? The shrines were created each by their individual monk, as a personal challenge to the hero. They were specifically created for this Link, as these monks were the very same who once sealed the Calamity Ganon in the battle 10,000 years ago, who have since mummified themselves, petrified in meditation for millennia, until Link awakens them upon completion of a trial. These trials range from intense duels with guardians, decked to the teeth with laser weaponry, to sized up golf, and are all accessed by placing the Sheikah Slate on the pedestal outside, opening the gate for the hero to enter. These shrines were once completely inaccessible, with Princess Zelda's research into them proving futile, even though she held the key, the Sheikah Slate. However, once Ganon re-emerged, the Great Plateau Tower became partially exposed, allowing Link to access it, causing all 14 others to surface, and activating the shrines. Once activated, the shrines could be opened with a slate, while earlier, when dormant, they remained closed. So, despite being designed as tests to ready the hero to face Ganon, the shrines were only accessible after Ganon's resurgence, when the hero should have already been ready. 
It's possible that this wasn't the intention, and that the ancient Sheikah wanted the hero to access the shrines prior to Ganon's resurrection, but the research into their technology was unsuccessful. But this is unlikely. The shrines seem designed to test the hero in the post-apocalyptic world, after the kingdom's fall. Not only did Ganon's resurgence conveniently uncover the Plateau Tower, the one closest to the Shrine of Resurrection, the tower's computer system, programmed millennia earlier, is aware that it would be partially uncovered in this manner, warning Link to watch out for fallen rocks. Additionally, the Plateau Shrines, the four found closest to where Link awakes, are clearly designed as tutorial shrines. This is obviously because, in the game, they are, but from a lore perspective, these four shrines are clearly designed to teach Link how to use the various runes of the Sheikah Slate, a premeditated plan which requires him to have been sealed within the Shrine of Resurrection, meaning the Sheikah knew. The Sheikah's foresight, their ability to see the future, is known to them as the Sight of the Goddess Hylia. This ability was so accurate and so incredible that they were able to predict obstacles which wouldn't be present for another 10,000 years. Examples of this are shrines like that of Gutcheck Rock, which is blocked by the Goron Beige, requiring Link to complete the Gutcheck Challenge, or the shrine in the Gerudo Desert, which is blocked by Pokey, exhausted and parched, desperate for her favourite drink. Both of these shrines, without the individuals outside, would prove no challenge at all for Link to enter. Yet inside are Blessing Shrines, rewards for the hero, which provide no challenges. When entering, their monks will announce that simply by gaining access to the shrines, the hero has already proven his worth. Entry to the shrine was in itself the trial. Now, this makes sense for shrines such as that of the Seven Heroines side quest, where a puzzle in the overworld involving ancient statues and their orbs must be solved to uncover the shrine. But without Pokey or Beige, these two shrines would be freely accessible to Link, but provide no challenge. This is due to the Sheikah's foresight. 10,000 years ago, just as they knew Ganon would return, they knew these shrines would be blocked by outside challenges. Not only this, but the monks were aware of the state Hyrule would be in, as the Hero of the Wild set, crafted specifically for this hero after completion of all shrines, was supposedly made for a hero who travels the wilds. The accuracy of the Sheikah's clairvoyance is incredible, seemingly absolute, and it appears that the shrines were designed to be opened after the fall of Hyrule. If this is true, then we're faced with a terrifying possibility that the Sheikah foresaw Ganon's corruption of their tech, yet built it anyway. In this case, why would they build them? Why would a seemingly benevolent race, blessed with clairvoyance, construct an army of machines they knew was destined to turn on the land they aimed to protect? The answer, it seems, is that the Sheikah made perhaps the single most difficult decision in the history of Hyrule. The Divine Beasts and Army of Guardians wouldn't have been built if they weren't necessary, meaning that during the battle 10,000 years ago, they must have been vital to Hyrule's survival and the success of the hero of that era. Yet if the Divine Beasts and Guardians were also intended to seal Ganon during the Great Calamity, and had simply backfired with Ganon's surprise attack, then what would be the purpose of the shrines, inaccessible prior to the assault? It's possible that the shrines were designed to be accessed before the Calamity, allowing Link to reach his full potential before the fall of the kingdom. But it does seem unlikely. Ganon's return uncovering the Plateau Tower seems a little too coincidental to have been a fortunate accident that the Sheikah did not predict. The desolate wasteland of Breath of the Wild's Hyrule might have been a best case scenario. Without the Sheikah machines 10,000 years ago, there might have been no Hyrule left whatsoever. With two main options available, one to build the machines, aiding the hero and ensuring Hyrule's survival, yet dooming the future kingdom to the Great Calamity, and another to refrain from building them, leaving Hyrule in the hands of Ganon, of course the Sheikah would choose to construct their army, even fully aware of the eventual destruction it would bring about. The shrines, therefore, designed to be opened after the Great Calamity, were tools for recovery. 
tools to ensure the future hero was able to rescue Hyrule from nearly absolute catastrophe. A catastrophe years in the making, foreseen yet impossible to avoid. And a heartbreaking possibility reveals itself here. Not only did the Sheikah 10,000 years ago know that this battle would ultimately be unsuccessful in destroying Ganon and that he would return, the hero of this era most likely did too. One of the game's side quests, The Hero's Cache, takes place at Kitano Bay, just south of Hateno Village. It's strangely the only one of Cass's song quests which doesn't end in a shrine, instead merely a chest with 300 rupees. However, the song itself is incredibly interesting, apparently taught to Cass by his teacher, a song once sung by the ancient hero himself. Cass announces that an ancient hero spoke these words, one day I'll return to fight evil. My cash is at 17 of 24. This rock will point towards its retrieval. The numbers are simply a riddle, and the rock's shadow at 24 minutes past 5, 1724 in military time, will show the chest's location. But the interesting part is that the ancient hero knew that he would return to fight evil, leaving treasure for his successor. It's unlikely that this ancient hero was Link before the Great Calamity, as we're never led to believe that this Link had any way of knowing about his near death during the Calamity, so it's far more likely that it was the ancient hero. The Japanese makes this even clearer. I shall be resurrected someday in preparation for the Calamity. So did this hero know that his victory over Ganon would be temporary, a seal doomed to fail, and that years later, a hero would rise to finish what he started. No links in the series have been seen to have any form of foresight, meaning that it's likely this was a prophecy foretold by the ancient Sheikah. However, if all of this is true, that the Sheikah knew that by creating the Divine Beasts they would be victorious in a temporary seal on Ganon, but doom Hyrule's future to the Great Calamity, requiring a hero trained by the shrines to defeat Ganon, why didn't they simply build the shrines earlier? and train the ancient hero? Or, going a step further, why didn't the shrines activate prior to Ganon's awakening a hundred years ago, rather than afterwards? It could be because we haven't seen the full picture yet, or the full plans of the ancient Sheikah. It could be that, deep below Hyrule, a dormant threat begins to stir. An ancient evil, suppressed and tormented in the darkness, reawakens. The Sheikah's foresight, all the shrines, the trial of the sword, Monk Mazkoshia, could all have been designed thousands of years ago to train this hero, the one true hero, to not only undo the horrors brought forth by the Sheikah's corrupted technology, but face Hyrule's final, ultimate evil, the source of the calamity, Ganondorf. Everything that the Sheikah did was calculated. The creation of their armies, the initial seal of Ganon, even the horrific theft of their technology by the beast, all designed to set up the Hero of the Wild for a plan we're yet to fully see. The Zelda series is built on the concept of destiny, but perhaps in Breath of the Wild and its upcoming sequel, we're seeing a different kind of destiny, one designed and created by the ancient servants of Hylia, the Sheikah monks. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. And there are links in the description to everything I used as inspiration and sources for this video. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.